everyone, and welcome back to the MFT YouTube channel. It's Carolyn here, and I'm thrilled to share a process video that features the latest stamp set from the Birdie Brown collection, Picture Perfect. If you have seen Picture Perfect, you know this stamp set is so stinking cute and perfect for all kinds of fun techniques. Today, I'm using it to show you how to make an interactive magic color slider card. I started with an A2 panel of Copic Friendly White cardstock, and I'm stamping this hilarious image using black licorice hybrid ink. I inked it up and stamped it a couple of times to get a good impression. Next, I've trimmed a 3 inch by 2.5 inch piece of acetate that I've placed inside my MISTI, and I'm stamping the same image onto the acetate using Jet Black Stays On Solvent ink. This ink is great for stamping permanently onto slick surfaces. I stamped the image onto some masking material and trimmed it out with my scissors. I'll use this to mask off the image on the white panel so that I can ink blend a background. I'm using Tumble Glass Distress Ink and a Mini Cloud Edges stencil to blend some fun clouds in the background. And I'm using my new life-changing blending brush. Oh my goodness, who knew that a brush could be so magical? It blends ink like a dream. I'll never go back to my old ink blending foam tools, I can tell you that right now. I just load the brush with color and blend away and it comes out perfectly every single time. I'm carefully removing that mask with my tweezers and I'll store it on top of the stamp set for future use. I colored the image with my Copic markers off camera so that I can focus on showing you the technique. I also die cut the outer edge of the image panel using the A2 stitched rectangle stack set one dynamics and I'm stamping one of the sentiments from the Picture Perfect stamp set using black licorice hybrid ink. I die cut the Polaroid shaker frame from smooth white cardstock and I've adhered some 1 8 inch double sided tape to the back of the frame. Oh, and I die cut the word hashtag smile from the bottom of the frame using the hashtag captions dynamics. I'll remove the release paper and adhere the frame to the stamped acetate panel. Be sure and align the aperture of the Polaroid shaker frame with the outside frame of the stamped image. The Polaroid frame should cover the outside lines of the image perfectly. I die cut the Smile Dynamics from some Razzleberry, Orange Zest, Lemon Drop, Limelight, Summer Splash, and Grape Jelly cardstocks, and I'm adhering them to the acetate with some quick drying liquid adhesive. Okay, I rummaged through my stash to find a die that would cut a slot at the top of the image, and decided that one of the dies from the Gift Shaker Window and Frame Dynamics would work. In hindsight, I probably overthought this a little bit, and you'll see why later on in the video. But let's move on. I've trimmed a piece of 4 and 5 8 inch by 2 and an eighth inch smooth white cardstock, and I die cut the top using one of the file folder edges to create a tab. This will be our slider panel. I'm adhering two 1 8 inch by 2 and a quarter inch strips together with a liquid adhesive, and then I'll adhere those to the bottom of the slider with some 1 8 inch double sided tape, positioning them so that they overhang the right and left sides evenly. In theory, those two little notches should be what stops the slider panel from coming completely out of the slot. And this would have worked perfectly had I not cut the slot at the top of the image so big. I should have done a partial die cut with the slot die so that it fit just inside the outside lines of the stamped image. But I came up with a quick fix later on in the video. I'm sliding the slider panel through the slot so that I can adhere the Polaroid frame to the image panel. I've adhered some 1 8 inch foam tape to the sides and bottom of the Polaroid frame, and I've pulled the release paper off halfway to give me a little wiggle room while I adhere it to the image panel. I want those two images to align perfectly. To keep the slider panel from shifting when I pull it up, I'll create a sleeve. I've trimmed a half inch strip of printer paper that I'm wrapping around the slider panel. I'll trim off the excess, adhere the back tabs with liquid adhesive, and then I'll slip it over the top of the slider panel, slide it into place, and adhere it to the back of the image panel with more liquid adhesive. This is the easiest way I've found to keep that slider panel in place without unnecessary bulk. And here's where I MacGyvered that slot problem. I grabbed the slot die cut from my trash bin and taped it in place on the sides and the bottom of that slot opening with scotch tape. Now, when I pull the slider panel, it doesn't come all the way out. Problem solved! I've adhered some foam squares to the back of the image panel, 
and I'm adhering it to a four and a quarter inch by 11 inch snow cone card base that I've scored at five and a half inches and folded in half. I've stamped the word pull from the interactive label stamp set onto the end of the tab using black licorice hybrid ink. And then as a fun finishing touch, I thought I'd add some word bubbles to the front of the card. I stamped the word smile from the picture perfect stamp set and the word woof from the lucky dog stamp set after a bit of stamp surgery and then die cut them using the word bubble dies from the Peekaboo Wheel Dynamics. I'm adhering them to the Polaroid frame using thin foam squares. And when I pull on that tab, the slider panel rises to reveal the fun colored image behind. Isn't this such a fun technique? And if I didn't have to do a bit of jimmy rigging to get it to work, it would have been super easy. But I'm just trying to keep it real, people. Even the most seasoned crafters make mistakes. Thank you so much for watching my video today. I hope you'll be inspired by it and give it a try yourself. For more great content, be sure and subscribe to the MFT YouTube channel. And until next time, have a great day.